How's it going guys? Back here with another video. Finally, right? Uh, I'm using my new camera, DJI Osmo Action. And today we're going to be working on this Civic. Pretty low. It's got a JDI push button start installed. We need to get the car moved right here behind this white Civic and then we can start pulling the head. So first we're gonna hop right on in this bad boy. Look at that thing. Ah, oh, these seats are pretty sick. We'll go ahead and put the card to start the car. Push the button. After pressing the brake. Uh-oh. Well, you know what that means. If you don't start, we gotta jump it. So let's get this jumper start box plugged in from auto, uh, sorry, Walmart, looks like, ever start. And then we can start the car. I believe our hood's already popped here. I didn't know that these things were so cheap. He said he paid $49.99 for this little jump box. Looks like I just need to plug these wires into this little port here. So, open up this port and Looks like it turned itself on there. We got a green light right here. Come back over to the car. Alright. Now we'll take the jump box back off. Now we can quickly move the car right here before it gets too hot. All right, now that we have the car moved. Uh, let me set you all up on a tripod over here and we're going to time lapse pulling the head off of this car. All right, so in this clip, you'll see me pulling my camera up to the Civic here to pull out some tools. We're going to go ahead and confirm that the head gasket is bad with a leak down test. That's why you see me using the funnel here uh, this aftermarket radiator is not made of great quality at all so trying to find a cap that actually wanted to squeeze down on it uh, was impossible so it ended up just being me filling it up and letting the weight of the funnel hold it hold the seal which was good enough all we need to do is have the water above the engine to see if bubbles appear and uh, so i've got everything here i got the wheel turned and all I need to do is go and get the compressor, uh, get air in it, bring it over here to the car, and then we will hook up the leak down tester, and I will perform the leak down test in real time. Alright, so I'm basically, I got it a little overexposed, but 
I'm going to be pumping air into each cylinder. And we're going to confirm that this head gasket is leaking. So starting out with cylinder one. So we did pump up the cooling system and nothing presented itself. The plugs look fair. I mean, it's got to be the smallest head gasket leak of all time, which is usually the case with these multi-layer steel head gasket situations. Turn our tester all the way down. Get it plugged up here. Now we need to make sure that we're on cylinder one. So we've got a 19 on there. I'm just gonna beat that guy because I have so many extensions that I make it come out past the firewall. Fender well. <laughs> Four piston is opposing. All right, that should be enough. Hook up our air. Next cylinder in rotation is three. Three is usually our winner. Opposing piston, 90 degrees. So right here, I'm an actually a moron and I'm using a 19 instead of a 17 on the crank pulley and that's why it's skipping for anyone that wants to call me out. But okay. I always do that on single cams because I'm used to the damn B-series. Okay, so And I'm actually getting passes. lucky on this motor. Most uh, engines that are weak, uh, this one seems to be strong. They will, uh, when I apply fuel pressure, it will actually want to spin the crank. And this one's not doing that.
All right, so. Right here we have 20% loss, right? We're gonna see bubbles if it's gonna come up to the coolant. We're losing pressure in the compressor here, but hopefully it'll present itself into the cooling system. It looks like the cooling system's moving if I'm looking in there, I can see the green coming up. And so we're just gonna let it run out of air through the compressor here. The air's going somewhere. And if it's going through the cooling system, we will eventually see bubbles up here. There it is. And that is how you confirm you have a leaking head gasket. Air into the cylinder, coming out of the radiator. Cylinder two is our culprit. All right, so we're down to the problematic cylinder. I went ahead and filled up the air compressor all the way. And now we're on cylinder two. And I'm gonna pump up the pressure all the way to 100. And we can see that we're at 95 here. And then if we look, we can see where the air is going. So this confirms to us that the compressor air is going into cylinder two, making its way into the cooling system and coming out of the radiator. So I'm gonna continue uh, tearing her apart here. I'm going to put y'all back into a time lapse and turn down our tester here. So, yeah, we're going to go back into a time lapse and get the power steering system off, the header off, everything on the left side of the head, the intake off, and then we can pull the head bolts. So, I'll put y'all back on the tripod here and we'll go back to time lapse. All right, so the sun is going down. I just unfortunately had some bad news about a friend getting into a car accident, so I've been away from the car for a moment. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and keep on cracking away at it. Uh, I think it's probably best that I take the battery off at this point, just because And then we're going to be working on this intake manifold and the exhaust manifold. The freaking exhaust manifold still has the stock bracket in the back to hold it in place. So it's not letting me pull it off of the head very easily right now. So what I'm going to do Disconnect this battery. Holy crap, I didn't realize how fat I look on camera without a shirt. I will not do that again, guys. I'm sorry. And then I'm going to work on the intake bracket. The intake bracket is a bitch. 
uh, the intake bracket is right here below the intake. It has this wire going to it that goes to the power steering switch. Looks like it pops off though. So yeah, we have two bolts that both intake to that bracket, and then that stinking bracket is designed in a way that I still can't pull the intake off until I get these lower bolts as well. So let's work on that. I have to say that this intake bracket is probably the longest part of this whole job. That and the stupid little hanger for the exhaust. Because if it wasn't for that, we'd be pulling that shit off right now. So, we're going to get our 12. Our 12 is going to go on to these two back bolts. Be able to loosen these bad boys with our hand ratchet. And then we're going to come back in with the deep socket maybe if we know where it's at there we go deep socket on our electric ratchet here second one well, now we're gonna get the lowers off we're gonna try back out here um, it's like the middle of the next day and we're gonna go ahead and get this car lifted up and uh, I can get under there and look at the brackets loose and then we can uh, pull the head after that so put y'all back on the tripod here and get the time-lapse going so just open this up lock in place Y'all situated. All 
right, so that should be a good spot. Switch over to time lapse. So now that we got the car jacked up, because the car's so low, uh, working here on the ground wouldn't even be worth taking it over to the lift because I would have to do all this just to get it on the lift arms. So now that we have it up in the air and kind of a safe matter, I'm probably going to put a wheel under the side here, but uh, I'm going to take the camera down there and I'm going to show you which brackets we need to disconnect. So the way I have it set up is I put the tire under the wheel. That way if the car does drop, it's going to hit the wheel first. The, the two wheels are going to come into contact, give me plenty of room to get out from under the car. So here we have our two twelves, two twelves, extension, electric, and manual. Alright, so right here we should be able to see uh, the two 12s that I need to remove right here. That one's a bitch ass 13, 14. So right here, I gotta go get another socket to fit that nut. And then you'll see me reaching up here to feel what size and where those lower intake bracket bolts are at. Looks like we got a 12 and a 14. Pull the notice two on. That's four removed. It removes this and that together. So we got this bracket off. This bracket up here, if you can see it. This guy is loose. Now we can take our intake off. And our exhaust. So let's go to the top.
right, so attacking the intake nuts on the top here, and then the two bottom side ones. I couldn't feel the middle one, or I would have uh, just gotten to that one with my swivel like I had planned, but I end up just pulling the head with the intake attached. So what you'll see me do here is eventually realize that I can't get to that bottom nut. You can't see anything right here because I didn't stop and change exposure settings on the camera, but I can't get to the bottom nut. For some reason, I, I just couldn't. So I'm taking off like the wiring harness thing and <clears throat> trying to make room and realize I'm wasting time. So I'm like, all right, I'll just pull it with the intake on. So I start disconnecting everything that's on the intake right here real quick. So injectors, fuel lines, and then a throttle body to eliminate having to take off multiple things that are attached to the throttle body. We have a head gasket kit coming that has a throttle body gasket with it, so uh, we'll pull that off and make it a little easier. Pulling off some hoses and getting them ready to snake away as I pull the head and uh, then slipping off the timing belt here. I was trying to get to the rubber grommet to loosen the tensioner, but I ended up just having to slip the belt off, which we have a new belt coming as well. So now that we have all of that ready, it's time to take off the power steering and the bracket because the bracket connects to the block and the head. So in order to release the head, we have to take that off as well. Now here's where I take off that throttle body. And then it's time to start pulling the head after taking off those temperature sensors. All right, so now we'll take out the head bolts.
All right, so that's it guys. We got the head off the car. It's day two. Um, I think we spent like maybe 30 more minutes on it, getting it off. Most of the time getting it in the air, but um, I'll go ahead and release this part of the video as just the first section of this car since it's the first half getting the head off. And then um, I'll do like a cleaning, prepping, getting ready for the head gasket and then putting the new head on or um, reconditioned head on the car after that. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.